indeed if what we consider the events of the last one week we know that you are a shield for us the glory and the lifter up of our head we thank you mighty Jehovah that none of us was severely afflicted by the hurricane and even those that are recovering either from power outage or one thing or the other father you have shown yourself strong accept our thanks in Jesus name please let's have a better amen praise the Lord very amazing we've had hurricanes before praise God but this particular one I don't even understand it because it looked like it wasn't heavy or they say it was a category one we've had category three but it looks like the damage of this one was more I could really am I the one that am I the only person that is on that page Huh? It was longer. Oh, wow. So the length. Anyway, let's just lift up our voices and thank God. Um, some people had power outage. They say out of 3 million customers, initially 2.2 million didn't have any power. I believe, well, we didn't lose our power, but many people did. Amen. Until now, there are still some people without power. Some people, their fences went down, some their shingles, their roofs, and so on and so forth. Let's just give thank God thanks. Just say, Father, thank you. Thank you that I'm alive. Thank you. I do not take it for granted. Blessed be your name, mighty Jehovah. Oh, Prince of Peace, we exalt your holy name. Thank you, Father, for your mercy. Thank the Most High God. Thank you, Father, for your mercy. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Thank him, thank him. Blessed be your name. In Jesus' precious name, we pray. As you know, our fast starts tomorrow. I don't know whether, whether that's why half of the so many people are not in church today. Praise God. But please let them know that the fast starts tomorrow. Let's put our hands together for Jesus. <laughs> Amen. I'm seeing one of our senior apostles in the house. Please, can you bring Pastor Henry Duco, an international missionary, to the front? Amen. People don't remember when I went to Costa Rica. Praise the Lord. Uh -huh. That's where you appreciate people like him. When you see different nations coming together, he's done a lot of work outside this country. Let's put our hands for, together for Jesus. Pastor, we re recognize you. Praise the Lord. So as I was saying, we're talking about waiting on God. We're talking about the rema power of God. And we're talking about Rema Activation. What's the title of today's message? Rema Activation. Before we get into the message, I want you to pray one prayer. Or maybe two, really. One. The first prayer is that, Father, send the word to me. Send the word to me. Send the word that addresses me right now addresses my specific situation right now. Please talk to the Almighty God. Send a word to me. Send a word to me. Aida Baika Poso Tele Dia Dose Pregia 
Onda baika bende usa. Oro moshete badi busata. E predeko suto boshka. Meteli hazopunda le broshka. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. The second prayer point is, Father, open my eyes to behold the hidden things, the wondrous things in your world. Open your mouth and pray. Father, open my eyes to see the hidden things, the wondrous things in your world. Please, can we open our mouths and pray? I bear usai le gaba. Unda bai kabe koshete. Unde be usebe ushate. Blessed be your name, Lord God. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Please let me have a better amen. And then the third one I want you to pray is, Father, let your word quicken me. Let your word quicken me. Let it quicken my body. Let it quicken my situation. Quicken me, O oh Lord. Quicken me, my Father. Quicken me, Prince of Peace. Abehenda loso panda kaile. E betel soto le boshete le graba. Ondo boshete de. O besunto shata. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name we we'll pray. Put your hands together for Jesus. And God bless you. You may be seated. Please, if we notice any families that are not in church today, let's still reach out to them. I want to commend the men's fellowship for really reaching out, offering generator, offering support. Praise the name of the Lord. Uh, I don't know whether the women did something like that, but I'm sure they did. We appreciate you also. Rema activation. What is Rema? I know we started last week. I feel a need to just explain it a bit. Let me first of all say one thing. There's no way in one sermon of 40 minutes that I will be able to do justice to this topic. Praise the Lord. Let's understand ourselves. But I'm going to give you enough to push you into the fast that is starting tomorrow. Praise God. Rema activation. So Rema and Logos. Rema and Logos. Last week I did an expose or I thought and said that where many people get into problems or get into challenges or what makes Christianity frustrating is when they interchange Rema and Logos. I gave the example of uh, when my wife and I visited a bakery in Paris where, you know, we put on Google, we we're looking for bakery. But it turns out that in English, bakery is one word, but in Paris, bakery means two different things. It can either mean a pastry shop or mean a bakery where actual bread is being baked. Praise God. And they both have two different names. And so, why am I saying that again? Because every time we come across the Word of God in the Bible, the Word of God in the Bible, sometimes we don't realize that that word has two different meanings in the Hebrew. It can be the Logos or it can be the Rema. And there is a difference. Praise God. Somebody say there is a difference. That difference sometimes, if not most times, creates the basis for frustration in the life of many Christians. And that is what I'm praying that today, as we take this journey into God's Word, there will be illumination and you will have breakthrough in Jesus' name. Praise the name of the Lord. So the text that we started with, and I said, I mean, I give you about three or four Bible verses, but I said, Matthew chapter 4 verse 4 says, And Jesus replied, It is written, and forever remains written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes out of the mouth of God. Praise the Lord. And we discover that the word comes out of the mouth of God, the word there is actually Rema and not Logos. Quick definition of Logos for those of you that still have Bibles. The Bible is Logos. The Bible is um, 
the general word of God that communicates his ability to do something, that communicates his general will on a matter, it basically introduces you and explains who God is. Talks about his power, talks that he has the power to deliver, talks about the power that he has the power to save, talks that he has the power to provide, explains that he's a God of covenant. For want of a better word, it's almost like a, a study on who God is and his abilities. Praise God. But that remains his logos. And it's not in any way diminished in any way. It just speaks about the ability and the capacity of God. Praise God. Praise God. But the logos is something that every believer needs to understand. Every believer needs to know what it is. Every believer needs to know how to activate it. Every believer needs to know how to encounter it. Because the Rema word of God, in a simple definition, is God's word spoken to you for a specific situation, for a specific season, for a specific matter. Amen. And we've given this example many times. A man of God may be preaching and he may share seven points. But one point will be like this. Oh, it's as if this man of God knows what is going on in my house. This man of God knows what is going on in my life. That word may be all that you take out of that sermon. It can come from the altar of God. It can come from when you are reading the Logos. You are reading 10 chapters. You are reading one chapter. You are reading 10 verses. And then one just jumps out at you. Praise God. That one that jumps out at you, it addresses you. Now the best form of Rema is when God speaks to you. When he's in his magnanimity either in a dream or in a vision. And usually, Rema is not, it's not like a God is, there are sometimes you have a dream and you have instruction one, instruction two, instruction three, and so on and so forth. We all crave that, praise God. But sometimes it can just be go. An example that I've given of this again is when Peter walked on water. Peter was inside a boat and he said, Lord, if you are the one, tell me to come. And all that Jesus said was, come. The word that went out was Rima. Amen. The word that went out was what? Rima. And the question, the thing that you need to understand about Rima is Rima has the capacity to quicken. It quickens your mortal bodies. It quickens situations. Amen. So, <coughs> When the Bible says man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of God, it's telling you that God wants you to live by the Rema word of God. If you catch that, your Christian walk changes. If you catch that, you come to church with an expectation that you are taking a word away that will transform your situation. Praise God. In fact, I dare say that this revelation is enough to transform your story, transform your situation, transform your life. Because you it you see, the moment when you open your Bible, you are expecting God to speak to you specifically. It no longer becomes a chore. It no longer becomes a fulfilling all righteousness. It no longer belongs... Uh, they say we must have quiet time. You go into that quiet time expecting to hear something. Let me give you an example. About 15, 18 years ago, when God started speaking to me about coming to America, he spoke to me specifically and said, Lola, they go to America. The heavens are open for you there. That was a specific word for me and my family. Amen. It was personal to me. 
Now, if I write it down and you read it and say, because God spoke to Pastor Jomo and said, the heavens are open and you go, well, God help you as God shows you mercy in Jesus' name. So somebody say, I need a word. Oh, that sounded too weak. Say, I need a word. We all need a word for our specific situation, for our specific season, for our specific moment. The moment you come in contact with that word, sometimes it's just one statement. You can run on it for a lifetime. Amen. You can run on it for a lifetime. Like I said, it's going to be difficult to, you know, I wrestled so much with this message because there were so many aspects of it. So I'll just try. The first thing is, I'll just say, under two very general headings, you can encounter the rhema of God. One of them is in God's magnanimity where out of his own magnanimity, out of his own desire to fulfill his purpose, he appears to you and he speaks to you. An example of this is uh, when Moses in Exodus chapter 3, after 40 years of silence, are you listening to me? I pray that none of you will wait 40 years before God will speak to you. Please have a better amen. After 40 years of silence, that's why we have a difference. By God's grace, we have the grace to activate Rema. They didn't know how to activate it. Some had one or two clues. And the Bible tells us in Exodus chapter 3, when you read it from 1 to 7, that all of a sudden, he noticed a burning bush. And then when he moved closer, he had a voice telling him, don't come any closer for where you are is holy ground remove your shoes and then God in his magnanimity gave him a word in fact when you read it he said I have heard the cry of my children I have seen their affliction he said and I'm come down now to deliver them and from that instruction an entire nation was delivered so there is power in a rema word can I hear your amen there is power in a rema word. Can I hear your amen? It is that rema word that can cause, for example, my father in the Lord, Pastor Ye Adeboye, to move to kilometer 46, a place infested with arm robbers and snakes, because God said, I will give you a city. Now, because God told him to move to kilometer 46, praise God. For those of you that know Nigeria, that's the Lagos Ibadan Expressway. You now decide that you are going to move to kilometer 80. Whatever you see there, praise the name of the Lord. I didn't hear your amen. Whatever you see there, do hold up. Whatever you see there, just say, take it. Praise God. Another example again is when God appeared to Jacob. In his magnanimity. And we see it throughout the Bible. God will just choose a person, approach him, and speak to him. Amen. But today we're here to talk about how do I activate God speaking to me. I have quite a number of formulas, but I will just use the ask formula. Very simple ask formula and I'm sure all of us know what the ask formula is Matthew 7 verse 7 can the technical help us with that please he say ask and it will be given to you seek and you shall find knock and it will be opened unto you please keep that in your left hand because we're still coming back to it very quickly because of our time, I'll let you know that you can activate Rema by sacrifice. Amen. You bring a, 
I mean, Solomon offered a thousand burnt offering. And that night, God visited him. Amen. Abraham offered an offering. He offered Isaac. God spoke to him. And we see that also through the Bible. But I don't want to focus on that. Praise God. <coughs> so you can activate Rema by sacrifice. You can also activate Rema by service. Most times, many of us here, the way we had our call was by volunteering in the house of God. Now, your call does not mean call to stand behind the pulpit. It might be called to a ministry of helps. Like I know somebody who is called to the ministry of helps. And the way he helps the, the church of God, even if he was a pastor, he would not be able to do it. It can be called to the ministry of a divine treasurer where God says, I'm going to pass unbelievable wealth through your hands. But usually, that call, many of us discover it either when you go through a discipling process or go through a volunteering process and then you now say, oh, you've discovered you have that capacity and somewhere along the line, God will speak to you. Praise the Lord. I say those two quickly because the one we want to focus on is activation by seeking. Activation by seeking. Now, like I said, I struggled with this teaching because it's so deep. Amen. It's really, really deep. There are just too many facets of it. For example, the Bible tells us that in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God, right? And he says this word was the light. Praise God. Can I have it from John 1? What's up with technical today? John 1, 1. In the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. Verse 2. He, he was in the beginning with God. Verse 3. All things were made through him. All things were made through the word. And without the word, nothing that was made was made. Are we understanding that? Verse 4. And him was life. And the life was the light of men. So let me explain this thing. Do you know that the word of God carries light? Amen. And that's why it says the entrance of your word giveth light and understanding to the simple. Now, how does that tie into what we're talking about? Do you remember that at the beginning, at creation, when the world was without form and void, and the Holy Spirit hovered upon the waters, praise God, it was when words were spoken that light came. So if anyone really wants to truly walk with God, the more of God's word that is in you, you speak light into darkness. But I don't even want to go down that road. Praise God. So how do we activate Rema? How do we take the word of God and make it personal such that in tarrying on it, in nesting on it, in engaging it, we hear a word or we gather a visitation? I think the first thing is every time you want to do that, have a clear cut objective. Very well defined, clear cut objective. Praise God. Hallelujah is weak again. Praise God. Is there anybody here that remembers something that you wanted so badly? You wanted it very badly. So badly that you nobody asked you to fast, you fasted. Nobody asked you to pray, you prayed. You have a burden. Sometimes even when we're asking God for healing. You know some of us, after three days, we stop praying. Even a month, we stop praying. I say, one guy challenged me. One day I was reading about an intercessor. 
and he told me that for 90 days he went to pray for a woman in a coma. It was the 91st day that she came back. Praise God. A lot of us think that Christianity is just microwave. You pray now, it must come now. May God help us in Jesus' name. Your burden must be clear. Your vision must be clear. As we go into this fast, what is your vision? You know, the Redeemed Christian Church of God calls fasts. Praise God. Many of you don't take part in it because you don't have a burden. Or you don't share the burden. Or you don't feel the... When you have a focus for your fasting, praise God, you will discover that it will even sustain you in your fast. So when you want to activate Rema, so to speak, it must be a specific scripture for a specific situation that addresses a specific problem in your life. Is it healing? Is it promotion? Is it breakthrough? Is it husband? And when it's a clear cut objective, six foot five. Lean mean fighting machine or plus size. Amen. Amen. This, I want him light skinned. That's how. How many of you know that God is a God of detail? Have a clear cut objective. Have a clear cut objective. You know, sometimes. The amazing thing about the Bible is once in a while you find people who are able to do that and they get a response. One clear person was Daniel. In Daniel chapter 9 verse 1, the Bible says Daniel looked at the books and he understood that the time of prophecy had come and he wasn't seeing prophecy. So he set his face to seek God. He had a specific burden. What is your burden? Do you, is that burden, you know, these seven days, I'm encouraging many of you to do water only. Praise God. Amen. Where's the hands? Oh, yeah. I say, if you can't do water only, do American fast. Drink Milo, drink cocoa. Just don't drink anything that a spoon can stand in. Amen. Amen. We're talking about fast now. Everybody's quiet. Amen. But is that your body that keeps you? You know, let me tell you one thing. Sometimes people find it easier to fast when they are afflicted. When there is a challenge, <laughs> amen, ah, people find it easy to fast. When there is a problem, can I share you, can I appeal to you, don't wait for problem. Activation by seek. Number one. Have a clear cut objective. Clear cut objective. Clear, well defined vision. Can I also help you? Many times you go to God with too many prayer points. In the Garden of Gethsemane, how many prayer points did Jesus have? 20. Hello? How long did he pray in the Garden of Gethsemane? Three hours. 
He prayed for an hour. Came back, they were asleep. He said, ah, could you not tarry with me? He went again, prayed. Came back, they were asleep. He went again, prayed. Then the angels came and ministered to him. But you, not you anyway, praise God. Father, I want car. Father, I want this. Father, I want that. Father, I want this. Father, I want that. Give me, give me, give me. My name is Jimmy. Give me, give me, give me. Take one burden. So I encourage you in these next seven days, fast starting tomorrow, yeah, have a clear cut objective. Make the vision. Write the vision. Make it plain so that he that runs, that read it, may run with it. When you have that clear cut objective, locate a scripture or a situation. So seek stands for decide to look for him. Seek for him while he may yet be found. The S also stands for scripture that speaks to this situation. You see how the S is just going? Is seek him with a scripture that speaks to the situation. For example, if you are looking for a husband or a wife, it is not good for man to be alone. Just take that scripture. Amen. I thought I, someone said amen. Yeah. Take that scripture. All scriptures that speak to that situation. Praise the Lord. Then, have a burning desire. And in that your burning desire, envision success, not failure. Envision the result. Because we serve a God who knows the end from the beginning, who has given you the capacity to determine the end from the beginning spiritually. Praise God. Praise God. Have a burning desire. Write the vision. Write the burden. Put it on your doorstep. Put it on your window. On your mirror. Put it on your phone. Amen. Text it to yourself. Write an email to self. There's a, there's a training we go for in the real estate business. It's called Bold. They ask you to write a letter to yourself and put it in an envelope and post it to yourself what you want to achieve in the next one year. So write a letter to yourself and get someone to post it to you in three months, in six months, reminding you of objectives. This is letter you have written to yourself. These are things you want to achieve through the power and the capacity of the Holy Ghost. So, number one, envision a clear-cut objective. Number two, have a very strong burden. Number three, Pray. Pray until you have assurance. Mark chapter 11, verse 23. Let's read it together. We're going to stand up on our feet. Read from 23. Stand up on your feet. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. One to go. For assuredly, I say to you, whosoever says to this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea, and does not doubt in his heart, but believes those things which he says, it will be done. He will have whatever he says. 
verse 24. Therefore I say to you, whatsoever things you ask, when you, when you believe that you receive them, and you will have them. God bless you. You may be seated. Put your hands together for the reading of God's word. There is no way to activate Rema without faith. There is a intertwined relationship. You've just got to believe it. Even if you can't see it. Amen. Amen. Hebrews 4 2. This same gospel, this same Logos, everybody hears it. But Logos only becomes Rema when it is mixed with faith. Somebody following me. This same Bible, the same message Pastor Deboye had, you had it. The same Jesus. Praise God. But it has not produced profiting. Or the measure of profiting differs. Why? Because you haven't mixed it properly with faith. Faith is the assurance. What is it? The, the assurance of things what hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. Faith by nature does not rely on physical evidence. By definition. Envision a clear cut objective. Seek a scripture that speaks to the specific situation and provides a specific solution. Amen. Sorry, I, I think I jumped syllabus a bit. Mark 11, 3, 23. Then speak the word. Speak the word. Speak to the mountain. Mountains have ears. Speak to the storm. Storm have ears. Amen. Speak to the word. Speak to mountain. Mountains have ears. Speak to the storm. Storm have ears. Speak to fig trees. Fig tree have ears. Speak to cancer. Cancer has ears. Speak to affliction. Affliction has ears. Speak to poverty. Poverty has ears. Speak to, to trials. Trials have I should, should I stop here or just go deeper a little? <sighs> Maybe I'll just go a little bit deeper. Praise God. Praise God. The Bible says a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. He said, let not that man think he will get anything from God. You cannot seek God and then be espousing doubts. See, you know, Christianity is an expose or is a way of living and using the powers of the world to come. I've told you you cannot follow God with logic. You cannot serve him. Because it, it, it can never make logical sense. 
Amen. Amen. Are you saying Christianity is calling me to be a fool? I'm sorry. The Bible says God uses the foolish things to confound the wise. I didn't say it. Amen. So what do I mean? You cannot say one thing and act another thing. You cannot say I'm healed. You know, I know somebody that has a minor medical challenge. Every time I talk to that person, say my back, the person has taken ownership of the back. The back problem and pain belongs to her. Praise God. If there was a title deed that was issued for that problem, you will see her name on it. Many Christians take ownership of affliction. Then once in a while they say, ah, I reject it in Jesus' name. The token rejection. Then they fall back. Praise God. Christianity is a way of life. Christianity is not a microwave solution. But it is the greatest solution. Amen. Essentially, if you are going to walk with God, you must change how you think. You must change how you talk. You must change how you believe. What did I say? You must change how you think. You must change how you talk. You must change how you believe. He says, look, don't have any problem about not conforming. Don't have any problem whatsoever about not conforming. It's, look, you are not even supposed to conform to this world. Do you understand what I'm saying? But everybody is conforming. Number one, you activate by what? Having a clear cut objective. Two, you have a burden. Three, you seek a specific scripture that speaks to the specific situation and has a specific solution. Amen. It can be one scripture or scriptures. Amen. Then you pray until you have assurance. Pastor, I have a job. Okay. There was a guy called Daniel in the Bible. Mm. Super civil servant. 120 kings reported to him. I guess you are busier than Daniel. Tell your neighbor you must be busier than Daniel. Hmm? Little wonder the Bible tells us that an angel came. Oh, let's read that one, please. Praise God. Daniel chapter 9. There are always two scriptures. So, all right. Daniel chapter 10, verse 12. Daniel chapter 10, verse 12. What does he say? Then he said unto me, Do not fear, Daniel, that from the first day you set your heart. To understand and to humble yourself before God. What happened? Your words were heard. 
And he said what? I am come because of your words. Now, I have given you a very top overview of some of these things. Well, because of our fast, I will quickly want to go over the vision formula we use for the fast. V stands for going to this fast with a vision. I stands for make sure there is intercession. Praise God. S stands for you must have scriptures. O stands for make sure your fast is organized. Praise God. That is, organize your prayer times. Organize who you will pray with. Hmm? How many of you are following me? V, vision. I, intercession. S, scripture. Praise God. You can also add separation. O, organization. Which one comes first? Is it I, Vision, VG, VG. Eh? I comes first. <laughs> then I stands for, you know, for me, I always interchange a lot of them. It can be your interactions. Make sure it's not when you are fasting that you start going to parties. Or going to places that will distract you. Who are you interacting with? N stands for nesting. Anybody know what nesting is? All right. Praise the Lord. I know it's a Sunday service. So we're going to pray. Um. I think I want to stop here. Uh, as time permits us, we will go into each of the things that we have mentioned and drill down on how do you find a scripture in that sense? How do you unlock what is inside the scripture? Very simply put, meditation is one of those keys. You understand? You meditate over that scripture. You speak in tongues over that scripture. You brood over that scripture. Amen. Amen. Those are some of the things that you do. You understand what I'm saying? You take that scripture, you read it so much it's alive. It's inside of you. They wake You wake up and how long do you do it? You do it until you get the result you are looking for. Praise God. Does that mean I will fast throughout? No. That brings another thing. There's a way you can fast and maintain the effectiveness of your fast even when you are broken but again those are not Sunday school Sunday uh, sermons praise God praise God praise God how many people are going to activate Rema a specific word eh? you know I always tell you that my wife she was one that proposed to me praise God that's my own version Praise the Lord. But one of the things my wife always says is that she asks God, you know the end from the beginning. Should I marry this guy? And God said, oh, he's your man. Somebody shout hallelujah. Your hallelujah is standing on one leg. My wife, I thought your own hallelujah would be the loudest. She's not saying hallelujah. She laughed. But my point is this. You see, the challenge of many is you don't have a word for where you are in life. You don't have a word for what you are doing now. You know what you are doing? You are conforming. Amen? Everybody is doing... What's the latest one? Is it cybersecurity? 
There was a time it was nursing. Everybody was doing nursing. Praise God. Praise God. <laughs> After nursing, it was, uh, I think, AWS. No, no, no. There was a time it was SAP. Then AWS. Praise God. <laughs> Are you in church with me? You have not asked God your own path. Can I share something with you? If God wants you to be a businessman, do you know the earlier you start, the earlier you get through the gestation period? So, it's coding, it's cyber security, it's uh, uh, somebody help me now. Service now. And there's nothing wrong with all those things. Praise God. Praise God. Are you in church this morning? If you're in church, shout hallelujah. The person with the loudest hallelujah, receive your miracle now. Are you just conforming to pay bills? Are you conforming to meet your expectations? And those are fantastic responsibilities. Praise God. But do you have a word? Tell anybody, do you have a word? Do you have a word for your specific situation? You know, I've told you something. Every time I come to preach here, I know what God has shown me about my ministry. So that's why when I come, some Sundays all of you come and the chairs are full. Glory be to God. Amen. Some Sundays I come like this where maybe some of you went to parties. You know, I hear all such, as, such wonderful excuses as pastor. Praise God. But I don't even want to go into those excuses. Amen. But what keeps me here is I have a word. So I'm asking you again. Because you see, another aspect is, you say, until the word of God tried him. Until the word of God was ripe for Joseph. Joseph was in prison. Oh, I don't want to go there. We go there now. But let me tell you one last thing, praise God. Remember that whenever God shows you the palace, he may not show you the prison. Rise up for your feet. Did you get that? Did you get that? Did you get that? Whenever God shows you the palace, sometimes to help you, he won't show you the prison. Because I'm sure if Joseph saw the prison, he would have said, ah, Lord, no, 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 no. Praise God. Or when God showed or anointed David, he didn't show him the cave of Adullam. He didn't show him that he will, be mad, he, will show, he will pretend to be mad in front of the Philistines. Tell your neighbor you need a word. Maybe your neighbor is not saying it well. Say, I need a word. A specific word for your specific situation that addresses a specific season of your life. Bow your heads and pray. Malibu saile mana masiti padaba. Ai kada masutu li radabadi. E da mana masupu mushite di badaba. Ande bakada badaba sutu li tebe. Ani bo bade bada. Hide me. Hide me in your secret place. Hide me, Lord. Hide me. Hide me in your secret place. My desire is to worship you. My desire is to worship you. 
of this stranger your children will not respond to. My sheep know my voice and I'm known to my sheep. Let there be an opening of ears and opening of spirits, Lord. Let there be encounters. Matele mando so polo bode, ere mede, ere bado saba, ere bunda la bande le mando lo bodo bodo sada kada kate da bada ba, eta ere nana masi le bara maso to lo bodo si, ere bara maso to lo si. Thank you, Father. And so, Father, I bring your children before you. To seek your face as a church, I want to seek your face as individuals. I want to hear that small, still voice. I want to encounter angels. As we set our hearts to seek you this week, Lord, encounter us. Meet with us, Lord. Show your children mercy. Thank you, Father. As we activate your word, let it become real, let it become live. Thank you, my Father. In Jesus' precious and powerful name, we have prayed. 